Hey YouTube, welcome to my channel. If you're new here and you want more maths content, then please consider subscribing. If you learned something, then hit that like button. I hope you enjoy my video. YouTube, welcome to episode 10 of my series on A-level maths. Today we're going to be doing points of intersection, so let's get right to it. So sketch on the same set of axes the graphs of y equals x squared and y equals 3 plus 2x. So it's just a sketch, so it doesn't need to be accurate. So in the previous episode, we looked at sketching general graphs. So that's the x squared graph. And then 3 plus 2x. Now one thing to make note is that the line of 3 plus 2x has a gradient of 2. And the x squared graph has a gradient that's continuously increasing. So in terms of how it would look compared to the quadratic is we can say across the y-axis at 3. Then we'll have a slightly shallower gradient in the long run. So these are the two functions. And then it says, hence, state the number of roots that the equation x squared minus 2x minus 3 equals 0 has and give a reason for your answer. Now what you might notice is that it looks very similar to what's in part a. But they have this minus 2x minus 3. Now where have they gotten that from? Well, if we start off by saying that if we move the minus 2x and the minus 3 to the other side, now what does this mean? When does x squared equal 2x plus 3? Well, if you look at the diagram above, we can see they are the same in two places, one of them being negative and one of them being positive. So the number of solutions where this quadratic is 0, yeah, so whenever something equals 0, that's the number of roots it has, is the same as the number of intersections of these two functions. So we just need to explain that. So we're saying the number of roots that x squared minus 2x minus 3 has is the same as the number of intersections between x squared and 3 plus 2x, which from part A, which from part A is 2. And that's your answer. Find the coordinates of the turning point of the curve y equals x squared plus 4x minus 5. So we need to complete the square for that. So we're going to half the coefficient of x, so that'll be 2 squared. Then we subtract this number 2 squared, which is 4, and we have minus 5. So you have y equals x plus 2 squared minus 9. So the turning point here is the negative of the number in the bracket, so minus 2, comma, minus 9. Then part b says, by sketching two suitable graphs on the same set of axes, show that the equation of x squared plus 4x minus 5 minus 1 over x is 0 has two negative roots and one positive. So which two graphs do we want to sketch? Well, we want to utilize part a, right? This is why they wanted us to work out the turning point. So clearly, we want to move over the 1 over x. So we need to sketch both of these graphs. Now, 1 over x is nice and easy. So for something like that, we did that in the previous episode. And this is why they asked us to find the turning point of this quadratic. Because at minus 2, minus 9, minus 2, now what we want to do is we want to figure out where is the recip graph at minus 2. Now at minus 2, if you were to sub it into 1 over x, you'd get minus 1 half. So minus 9 is somewhere much, much lower. So the turning point is somewhere over here. So your quadratic is going to look something not accurately. One thing we don't know is where the roots are. Something like that. Yeah, But one thing we do know about this quadratic is that its y-intercept is minus 5, right? So because we know its y-intercept is minus 5, we know it's going to cross at one of the positive sides on the x-axis. So from here, you can see that there are three intersections. There are two negative intersections in terms of the x-axis, and one of them being positive. 
So we can say from our sketch, we can see that there are three intersections. Two are negative and one is positive. And that's it. This is your solution. So on the same diagram, sketch the curves with equations y equals x squared, 3x minus a, and y equals b over x, where a and b are positive. Now y equals b over x, that one's easy to draw. Can't do anything apart from just draw a recip graph, right? This is y equals b over x. This one though, that's a cubic, right? We need to know where it crosses the axes. It's already factorized. So we have x squared equals zero. That means x equals zero. Remember we practiced this in the last episode as well. And then we have three x minus a equals zero. Now if three x minus a equals zero, when you rearrange that, you get x is a divided by three. Now this is why they've said a is positive. So we know to put a cross here, uh, a divided by three. Now remember the trick I taught you, it's a positive cubic. So like the Drake song, yeah, it starts from the bottom and it works its way up. But because it's x squared, it crosses zero in a quadratic shape. It only touches the x-axis, then it comes back up and crosses at a over three and then keeps growing. Then it says, state giving a reason, the number of real solutions to the equation x squared, three x minus a minus b over x is zero. And this is where we're going to do the same explanations as before. So we can see there's two intersections here. So what we're going to say, so we're going to start off with the equation, and then we're going to move the b over x. So then we can say, when we observe the graph, we can see there are two intersections, one negative and one positive. You don't really need to say that, but I'm just going to say it anyway. Just be thorough. Don't want to risk it in the exam, right? Therefore, they're saying, What's the number of real solutions to the original equation? We can therefore say there are two real solutions. And there you go, that's your answer. So when it comes to these points of intersection questions, they always just make you do a sketch. Then they ask you to find the roots of some equation, but then that equation always rearranged to the two graphs you've just drawn on the diagram. Then you just state how many times it intersects. So it's not a particularly difficult topic, but to be honest, this is one of the main topics which students should, uh, not struggle with, but they forget in year 13. So be very aware of these questions. State giving a reason the number of real solutions rather than actually solving them. This is a AS topic and it's one that's not very difficult. You just have to remember I need to sketch. In year 13, you know, when these questions pop up, they don't necessarily tell you to sketch as well. So just be mindful of that.